at the carnival. Afterwards, mm -hmm. I can enjoy what it is to enjoy now. All they do is talk about fictional thing, about Bible, about... No, you, you, you just follow the story in the Bible. None of them don't make no sense. They don't make sense to me. You just follow... Listen, you want to have a good time in life? Enjoy what it is to enjoy now. Jump up, follow the crowd, do what's necessary. These preachers here, the only fooling you. You see, he, he got, he's driving a fancy car. He got a big house. And he, I mean, he's heading there. <laughs> so don't believe he, he, he trying to get money of his own. Don't believe he. You follow your own conscience, your own guy. This preacher, he ain't making no sense. It's sounding very cynical here, sir. Uh, what has life done to you to make you so cynical? You talking about you, God. Let me tell you what this God do to me. I had a mother who followed this God all through life. She's sick. She begged me to pray. No, I didn't want to pray. But I pray and ask God to bring her, to bring her back to me. Let she get better. You know what? She got worse till she did. I had a wife really good. You want to why I start going carnival and running behind women? Really good. She was, she, my mother, she, she went to my mother church. She heard the Bible say, have one husband. But she didn't understand that, of course. Because she had others. Now, what Bible you want to follow and what God? I pray for me family and me family break up. I pray for my mother. She's still dead. Now, why should I follow that God? I don't understand. Well, the best way to know, to, to learn something when you don't understand is to do some study. So how about we take a look in the Bible and see what it has to say about what to do in these times of, I would call it, extreme heat. Now you go into the Bible, I tell you already that me believe in a Bible thing. But I can listen to you a little. Now, the worst thing, it was actually a famous writer. Maybe you've heard of him, C.S. Lewis. I don't read. <laughs> but C.S. Lewis, he's a famous writer. And he said something very interesting. He said that uh, the real danger... Is of the, oh, sorry, it says, not that I am, I think, in much danger of ceasing to believe, in, to, to, to believe in God. The real danger is of coming to believe such dreadful things about him. The co conclusion I dread is not, so there's no God after all, but rather, so it, this is what God is really like. I'm hearing from you, you're, say, you're telling me that you've come to the conclusion that God is, I don't know, Maybe in your eyes he seems cruel, he seems uncaring, he seems laid back. But I'm telling you, I want to tell you that God is not like that. Let's look at some stories in the Bible. We, we read about Abraham. You know Abraham? Yeah, he don't live far from me in, in Lakode. Uh, I'm not talking about that Abraham. I'm talking about Abraham that lived a live long time ago. Now, Abraham was a fierce follower of God. I mean... This man got up and he left his home. He, he, he probably had a big mansion. Well, they had tents back in the day. But you know what? I mean? He was a rich man. And he left all that riches. He left his home. It's not like leaving your home nowadays, you know, where you hop on a plane and you go somewhere else. You could maybe shack up in a hotel or anything like that. He take his caravan, take his family, and leave his home to go to a land God would show him. He don't even know where the land is. You don't even know what he's going to meet when he goes there. But he followed God all the way. But then God, uh, one day, God just come and do something, ask him to do something very strange. He asked him to sacrifice his only son. Stop. That is exactly what I talk about. What kind of God would ask a man to do something like that? What kind of God would tell a man to go and sacrifice his son? And based on what I understand, that same God tell this man who said, make a lot of promises about that son. And then the God turn him back and want to break his promises. Tell the man to kill the son. What kind of God would do that? That makes sense to me. 
I tell you, sometimes when we, when, we, when we see things, it may seem cruel to us, but I'm telling you that God had a plan through it all. I remember that when I was a kid, my parents would do things sometimes that, honestly, to me at the time, seemed cruel. We couldn't have much time on the computer. We had to go to bed by a certain time. We had to study all night. It seemed cruel. Why couldn't I enjoy my life? But just like how my parents were looking out for me, God was looking out for Abraham. You see, him asking Abraham to sacrifice his son was a test for him. But you don't test people like that. You just give them some questions on a paper and ask them to give you answers. Asking somebody to kill somebody, the only son, that is a really, really hard test. You see, that's the thing. The test was not for Abraham to kill his son. God never intended for Abraham to kill his son. He wanted, you see, I believe that God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. So he didn't need to test to get any information from Abraham. The test, rather, was to show Abraham where he was. It was to show him what he can do with God. So it was a test to see if Abraham really believed in God. Well, like I said, he probably already knew that. God is omniscient. He knows the state of Abraham's life. But look at this. Look at this. God never intended to kill, for Abraham to kill his son. He never intended for, for Abraham to, um, to actually commit murder and kill the son that he promised him. But he needed to show Abraham how strong his faith could be. Sometimes we do not know how far we're willing to go until we're actually pushed to that extent. He wanted Abraham to know, learn for himself the faith that would carry him through, to feel the depth of faith and to see that faith rewarded. All right, I'm going to go with this one for now, right? I'm going to go with this one for now. Let me hear another one. Well, have you ever heard of Hosea? Who? Hosea. I know he's a minor prophet. You probably don't hear much about him, but he actually went through something similar to what you described earlier. You see, Hosea, on God's command, married a woman, and this woman cheated on him. Boy, you're bringing up me story there, boy. Not only did this woman cheat on him, but this woman had sons for him, and he named the sons, um, indicated that he already knew that these sons were not his. Now that was the me. And then, you, you think, that, you think that's, uh, that's, that's bad? After he, she had these sons for him and left him with the sons, she gone with another man. And then later, he sees the woman being sold into slavery. So sweet. Who actually, and I know my mother introduced me to my wife. Who introduced that woman to Hosea? It was God who asked her to marry him. Nah, nah, nah. Just now you tell me God asked somebody to kill, some, kill his own his son. Now you're telling me God introduced a man to a woman that he know can cheat on him, that he know can get children and say it's your own, but it's not his own. That one, hard to swallow. You see, here's the thing. Hosea, just like Abraham, was a man of God. In fact, he was a prophet. And through Hosea's life, God had a message for the Israelites at the time. Because you see, just like how the, your, your wife cheated on you and Hosea's wife cheated on him, at that time, Israel was cheating on God. And he, had, he wanted to show these people a message. And he knew, like how you said earlier, that a, a prophet coming and starting to preach down the place, it wouldn't work. So he was giving them an object lesson. Now you see, here's the thing. When God works in our lives, we run a risk of one of two things. Firstly, we either risk not recognizing when God is at work. I can imagine that as Hosea was, was experiencing all that he had to experience, he was wondering, is this really the woman God had for me, a prophet? Am I really meant to suffer like this? Hmm. And the second risk we run is misunderstanding when God is at work. We're thinking that God only intends for me to suffer. That, 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 that as a Christian, I have to go through all these hardships. When I watch y'all, it seems so. But here's the thing. Hosea made a commitment to God to spread the word of God. And through Hosea's life, I, liked, I would like to believe that people looking on, seeing how Hosea kept coming back to his wife, keep saving his wife, spending money to buy back this cheating wife, 
We see how God feels towards us. Even when we cheat on him, he doesn't stop coming after us. So once again, you're saying another person was used, God used another person as an example so that other people could see and come to him. So, Ozio was a scapegoat. It can, it can seem so, and that's where you run the second risk, misunderstanding what God is going through, what, what God is, um, when God is at work. You see, sometimes we recognize God, but sometimes we think that we, ha we have false thoughts about him. We, re or we misunderstand. While we are feeling all hurt and embarrassed and, and in despair for all that is going through us, we start to blame God for the things that's happening around us. The thing is, I want to tell you something. God doesn't interfere with free will, you know. So it means that even though God told um, Hosea to marry this woman, he didn't make her go and cheat on him. Those were the choices that she made. So Abraham had a choice, so? Yes. You could have chosen to disobey God. Yes. But then um, the consequences of disobeying God is, um, so? Just because the consequences of one choice is death doesn't mean that it's not a choice. Well, it's a choice for me. <laughs> I don't want to die. So, Hosea married a woman, and he keep going backwards. So you're saying that's what God does for his children. Indeed. So it means that me, who like my carnival, who like all the women, despite that, God's still reaching out to me. Indeed. Despite me just cussing a preacher and saying all them bad things, God's still reaching out to me. You know, I honestly believe that one of the qualifications for being a preacher is to have a thick skin. Because if you're standing up, people are going to curse at you. If you're going to be spreading the word, there are people who are going to reject it. If God turned his back on everybody who rejected him, then nobody would be saved. All right. I I'm hearing you so far. You don't got me yet, though. Because them two stories, mm. one, a cheating wife, boy, that's serious experience for me. No, I can't deal with that one. The other one, asking a man to kill his son, that's cruel. You, you would admit that. But you say it's not for will? All right. Let me go to another one. Well, have you heard about, you must have heard about Job, right? <laughs> that that, that makeup story. All right. Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I honestly believe that this is a real story. This is a man who lost everything. I mean, it might seem so fantastical to us. I can't imagine losing all that in quick succession. But it has happened to people. You go, you're living life normal, you're living life on, on a high road, but all of a sudden, you drop straight to the bottom. You lose everything. Everything. Your, 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 your family, your wealth, your health, all, at, all in quick succession. And yet, watch this. While Job was going through all those hard times and all those sufferings, he found comfort in praising God. Wow. So... The man lost everything. He lost house, land, animals, and in them time, you know what animals mean. And then his children died. God did that to him, right? No. What? No. All right. God didn't do that to him. Who did it? The devil. How the devil did it? God allowed it. That mean God did it? No. Let me go back over the cycle. Who did it? The devil. How he did it? God allowed it. If God didn't allow it, would it have been done? Probably. You see, we have, we have the misconception that every pain that we go through is because God allows it. And indeed, some things God do allow because he wants to test us, he wants to temper us. But even then, God has said that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Just because we are Christians does not mean that sometimes we would not suffer. The thing is, as long as we are living in a world of sin, where the, the very um, nature around us has been polluted by the evil of sin, suffering is apparently a fact of life. Anybody can tell you that if you go through life expecting everything to be namby, pamby, good all the time, then you're too naive. 
All right. Now, the first thing, I don't understand the language with Nambi Pambi, but I think I know what you mean. <laughs> Let me get this. You saying that suffering is out there. But I just look out there and sometimes them Christians with their long faces, they got to look like they're suffering more than anybody else. The thing is, is that when you suffer, because suffering, as I said, comes to everyone. But when you suffer, you can choose to react to the suffering in one of two ways. And unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of Christians who choose the first way. The first way is that you can be bitter, you can be angry, you can lament about how this, why this is happening to me, why am I suffering like this, why me, why can't things be better for me? Or you could choose the second way, like Job. You can choose to praise God instead. Thank him even in the bad times. I mean, I know we're looking at Job, but let me draw your attention to another set of people. You know, Paul and Silas, they were in jail, thrown in jail for preaching the word of God. They were about to face execution, because that would happen to Christians back in the day. But even though they were in jail, what they chose to do, they, they were not bitter and angry. They chose to praise the Lord. Hmm. So, let me go back. God asked Abraham, sacrifice his son. That's a cruel thing to do. Then, he caused Hosea to marry a woman who liked men and went with all kind of men, gave him children of other men. That wasn't a nice thing to do. Then he allowed somebody to inflict heavily our harm on somebody who he supposed to be his child. Wow. As a parent, somebody come for trouble, my son, boy, they're facing me with some good opposition. But God allowed it to happen to his son, and you're saying all of that is okay. I mean, you're telling me the outcome is the outcome I'm supposed to look at, that we're seeing in all the story in Abraham case is a test of him so he come out believing in God and stronger uh, okay in Hosea case he had to be an example for Israel a literal example to tell him this is what you were doing to me that we're saying right gosh but the poor man went through so much in order to spread a message all right good and then you come to Job all kind of things happen to Job okay all the suffering he went through Based on what I understand, again, his wife actually tell him, look, of course, God. And who knows, things don't run faster for you. Basically, we should tell, what's telling him, commit suicide. Kill yourself. End the suffering. So Job went through all of that. Okay? But God allowed all these things to happen to him. I sure at the end, when Job done, he was a, he was a haggard out man who couldn't face life afterward. And that's not the case. The Bible tells us that when Job finished going through all he goes through, and he kept with God through it all, that when it was finished, he ended up even richer with more children and more wealth than he had before. You see, that's why I believe the story. Story don't end like that. Story in life don't, that does never end like that. It got to get a, a, a sad ending. How Job come out so? Tell me something else. Now, I mentioned Paul earlier. You know, when we look at the life of Paul, he probably suffered the most out of all the um, apostles back in the day. He was thrown in prison. He was, he was taken to, to, be, to, to Rome to be imprisoned for years before he was finally executed. He was stoned. All kind of things happened to this man. But in the end, we see that through it all, Paul is one of the most prolific authors in the New Testament. He wrote most of the 21 letters in the New Testament. You know, sometimes when we suffer, when we go through all these pain and strife, it creates a testimony that allows us to connect with those who are going through the same thing. I don't know about you, but if, I, if somebody comes to me, if I am going through something, let's say I lost a parent, and somebody comes to me saying, oh, it's okay, and they still have both their parents, I would want to turn around and say, well, how do you know why I'm going through? I got a feeling that's why I'm connecting with Hosea. 
Yeah, I got a feeling, yeah. Continue. You see, sometimes when we, when we receive, when we are supposed to, to, sh to show the same love and share the same message that we have received from God. You see, that's why the first types of evangelists, the first type of preachers were eyewitnesses. Those who were to told to see, to, to, to say rather, what they saw and what they experienced. Because the best type of message is the message that you have experienced yourself. Okay, so basically what you're telling me here from all of these stories is that you can go and you, you said the title of the, the Bible study was Extreme Heat, correct? Mm -hmm. All these people went through, we could say extreme heat, different situations. They trusted in your God and as a result of trusting in him, they were able to be stronger, to give a message to the people, to gain more in life, and show persons that when you stand up for God and you, you, you choose to walk the right way, things will always be bet good for you. And when you praise God in your harshest situation, like them two people with the name, Paul and who? Silas. Silas. You praise God in your harshest situation, no matter what you're going through, he will come true for you. All right, these people were in extreme heat. What about me? Would you look at me and tell me I'm in extreme heat? From all you've experienced, I would say, yes. So you see, here's the thing. We cannot belittle one's suffering. What you experience might be extreme heat for you. And I cannot tell you what, how you should feel through what you're experiencing. I cannot tell you how you should, how you should, um, sorry, I'm losing track of my thoughts. I cannot tell you wh um, how you should be feeling at this time. Only you know for sure. Only you, I should say, and God. And that's why he's the best person to connect to when you're going through your situation. Because just like how you know what you're going through, God knows it too. He feels it intimately right there in his heart. And that makes him the best person to turn to. Because you could tell me all that you've gone through, all that you are feeling, all that you are experiencing. But until I go through it myself, I would not know for sure. And even, I might not even feel the same things you're feeling because I'm a different person. So you're saying that I should talk to God. Indeed. Tell him what I'm going through. Instead of talking him down, I should talk to him. And you just spoke to me, all right? But, but you know, <laughs> this thing in life with these people and what they went through, I, I still got doubts, still got doubts about it. But I can read about it and maybe those doubts will go away. And a lot of things that you say, you know, they kind of make sense. But Abraham, he would have made that sacrifice. If I was a 12-year-old boy going on an altar, I don't care how high the, 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 the hill was that was up there, I'd be jumping down. Mm. But that little boy stayed there too. So you got to give him credit. Hosea, he went and he married that woman. And I think he had an idea marrying such a woman we would go through. But then again, you watch what the children of Israel was, were putting God through. With all the disobedience. And I mean today you watch us. I mean if, if you're saying that I putting God through, bro, that woman put us here through, then I need to start thinking seriously about what I'm doing if I am in that direction. And Job, oh boy Job, all the things Job went through. That was real heat. Mm. Real heat. I understand that he had... Um, a, a, a bad case of monkeypox. <laughs> yes, I understand. You had a bad case of monkeypox all over his skin. And people tell you all kind of thing. That was when, that, that was when his wife looked at you and probably scarred you until he commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Bad case of monkeypox. But you know what? I'm glad that Job hold on. My, 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 my friend, I got to call your friend now, preacher, despite all the things I said about you earlier. Thanks a day. Thanks a day study. I can consider what you had to say. I will consider. Okay.
you know, he makes some sense, you know. And I feel I need to decide to probably give my life, probably change my life. But you know what? I don't think I want to do that now. Doing that now would mean I can't party. Doing that now would mean I can't, you know, do the things that I used to do. I still want a little party, so I can wait a little, you know. I think so. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know. But tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, I give my life tomorrow. I thought about today. Oh, it's so much easier to say tomorrow. Who promised you tomorrow? Better choose the Lord today. For tomorrow, very well might be too late. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I will, but tomorrow. Jesus said, here I stand, won't you please? Take my hand and you said I will but tomorrow oh tomorrow I give my life tomorrow I've thought about today oh it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the Lord today for tomorrow very well might be today tomorrow I give my life tomorrow I've thought about today oh but so much easier to say Tomorrow, who promised you tomorrow, better choose the Lord today. For tomorrow, very well might be too late. Very well might be too late. That was somebody talking to me that I didn't really see. That was my conscience, I think, telling me, no, not tomorrow, today. Today, I should make that decision. You know what? I hear about some preacher, some other preacher, starting something tomorrow night. And I understand it's somewhere in call the day where they call the church. And I think I can go and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to listen to him. I understand tomorrow night he's talking about the truth about the Bible and I need to learn about that so tomorrow night right here at call the church I'm gonna come I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna start to listen night after night to that preacher and who knows maybe maybe I will make my decision fully by the end of the first night who knows but one thing we're certain about now, 
is the accepted time. Now is the time to give our life. Tomorrow may be too late. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone, and a happy Sabbath. Come on. We're in church. It's always a good thing to be in the presence of God. But whenever you show up in church, there's an extra special blessing. We sometimes say we're inviting God's presence, we invoke God's presence, but listen to this carefully. He's here. You're the only one who's coming to meet up with Him. So when we show up on Sabbath morning, we come in to spend time with God, and it's good to see all of us here this morning. A special welcome. Let me join in and say a special welcome. I see some of the folks I like seeing around. I see Brother Jardine, our evangelist is here. I see so many of you here that uh, visit with us, and I want to just say it's good to have you in church. Brother Jardine, I want to pick on what you said last night. We had a very good time. I wasn't able to be here last Wednesday night. We had a fantastic time here last night in the presence of God. And I want to pick on a few things that Brother Jardin said. I'm not, I'm not going to stand here and try to fire anyone up because Brother Jardin said, if you're not fired up by this time, you're not going to get fired up. But I want to add to this, Brother Jardin, if you're not fired up for evangelism, you're not fired up for heaven. And somebody should be shouting mercy. If you're not fired up for evangelism, you're not fired up for heaven. Because if you're fired up for heaven, you will make sure that every step you take, every word you say, everything you do will be designed to get to heaven and get somebody there too. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. This morning, this Sabbath morning is the final Sabbath. Folks always say the pre-ultimate, the final Sabbath before the start of a crusade. And we've been talking this for months. We've been talking about the evangelic trust of our churches and of, of college church in particular recently. And I've stood here and done my very, very best. I believe God has placed words in my mouth and I've done my best to do the promotions. To get us fired up. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we are fired up. I'm hoping that every one of us have done our part and we continue to do our part. There's a Sabbath before crusade. Tomorrow night, our crusade starts with evangelists here. And the evangelists, I'm going to invite you to come to the front in a few minutes because I want to do something that Brother Jardin touched on last night. There's something that just came to my mind about 15 minutes ago, and it's something I feel impressed that we should do. Brother Jardin emphasized the need for us to pray for our evangelists. I'm going to ask our evangelists to come to the front. I'm going to ask our elders to come to the front. And we're going to ask you to lay your hands on our evangelists as we pray for something specific. Those of us who are here last night, pray for the pastor's voice, the preacher's voice, for traveling mercies. We're going to ask you to pray for his family. We're going to pray that God will give him a message that will use him mightily through this crusade. That the preacher would allow himself to be used by God. We're going to pray that God would allow you to use you, uh, use you in this evangelic, tr evangelic trust. In my hand, I have a poster. There are only four of them. We're going to put them in strategic places around. But Brother Marlon, Brother Marlon, join me up here, please. Brother Marlon has been in charge of our, our, our um, visitation, and I'm sure, like myself, he has been disappointed. But, but uh, Olivier, have a seat for me. A little disappointed that we have not had his support. But today, Today we have something beautiful happening and Brother Marlon is going to be the one who will tell us about it and he's going to go give us a little more information about what's going to happen on that event. Brother, Brother Marlon. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good. It's good to see all of you here this morning where we can come to worship and to praise God. I want to join with all those who welcome and welcome everybody in a special way this morning. Um, this afternoon, we'll be having a motorcade. 
And we're starting, we're meeting at the church here for 4 p.m. And we starting at the church up to acres and down to Pumpset, Bottom Road, down to um, Burnham, and come back on the main, back up to the church. Um, on this journey, we will be doing some whistle stops. So we'll be sharing out all our um, invitations. We'll be sharing out all our invitations this, um, this afternoon while we go. And there, there are persons who uh, we might meet on the way and might need prayers. Just take one minute and pray for them. So I'm inviting all those who have transportation to come out. There are those who probably might not have transportation. We're going to... We're going to... Um, carpool, yes, that's the correct word. <laughs> we're going to carpool. So we're meeting here at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. And we journey up to two acres, as I said. Well, um, everybody will not go into acres itself because of the amount of vehicles to turn in that area. So what we'll do, we'll just allow probably two or three vehicles to go in and turn, and the rest will stay by the gap. All right? So I'm inviting everybody. So we're meeting at 4 p.m. this afternoon. All right? What, did I, what time did I say? 4 p.m. Now, <laughs> Elder spoke about us getting fired up. And, and, and Brother Jardine spoke about it last night and, and on Wednesday night. And if we had not, as he mentioned, if we are not fired up for God, then something is wrong. Right? If we are not fired up for evangelism, then something is wrong. And I'm hoping that all of us, all of us can get ready and get others ready for Jesus soon coming. And the only way how to do that is to tell others about Christ's return. Amen? So, this afternoon, and if for any reason, if for any reason that you might not be able to make it this afternoon, but you still need invitation to give to to your friends because persons like brother Rodney might not want to go on the motorcade but he might have friends that he want to invite to the cruise to the crusade you can collect the invitations right after I'm talking about the, 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 the senior persons who might not be able to to go but they will have persons in the neighborhood or other persons that they know who can come to the crusade even though they might not be able to come you can collect invitations from me or Elder Thomas or Elder February right after church so you can invite persons. Amen? Thank you very much. See you this afternoon at 4 p.m. And we start tomorrow at a bang at 7.15 p.m. Inviting everyone to be here. Amen? One last thing. There is a van provided. For those of you who are inviting folks, the van will be coming up through Bonham. It's going to swing around back to, to, to rescue. It's going to come and drop folks up at the church. From the church, it's going to go up into Acres. Acres to Acres Gap, up into Acres Hill, and come back down. It's going to do a reverse at the end of the crusade. So when you invite folks, let them know there's transportation provided. For those in the Bonham area, the van will be coming through at 6.30. Sister Top, are you here? Um, Sister Nanton and others, let the Richards know the van will be coming through, leaving the leaving stops gap at, at 6.30 to make sure it gets a pair to go into acres. All right? Make sure you're on board. Make sure you're ready. Make sure that you pray somebody into the kingdom of God. I'm going to ask our elders to come forward this time. Brother Jardin and John, say, please, all our elders, please come forward. We're going to ask our evangelist, Brother, Brother Olivier. I'm not giving you a chance to say anything. You have a time to say whatever you have to say afterwards. So let's ask Brother Olivier to stand. All our elders, please come quickly. And we're going to lay our hands on the evangelist. And we're going to ask God to lay a special blessing on him for this, for this event. All our elders, please.
Where are our elders? Come on, let's do this quickly, please. All our elders, quickly, please. just like to say that the laying on of hands is not a strange thing. If we read Hebrews chapter 6, Paul puts it as one of the doctrines that the early church adhered to, the laying on of hands. Of course, today we hardly do it except when somebody is getting ordained. But it used to be a practice of the early church and I don't really see anything wrong with it. So don't think that something is wrong. Okay? Um, elders, you would lay hands on him just as if we are ordaining him. Actually, we are setting him apart for very, very special use by God. Brother Morgan, come. Lay your hands on him. Could we all bow our heads as we offer a short word of prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for being a God who knows and who understands and who loves in spite of. Father in heaven, we pray to you at this moment that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will set aside, set apart, I should say, Brother Oliver, for this very, very special work that he is supposed to be engaged in. Father, it is only your Holy Spirit. It is not by his might, nor by his power of preaching, but it is by your Holy Spirit that he would be able to do anything. Amen. We know, Lord, that no man comes to you unless he is drawn by you. We know that it is not in man to just suddenly make up their mind and be converted and repent. No. It is your Holy Spirit that is working constantly with people Amen. and at certain times of refreshing, that Holy Spirit will then be able to br break through and use somebody to make a special call so that people can make up their minds to follow you. At this moment, Lord, we pray that as the elders of this church lay hands on Brother Olivier, that, Father, you will anoint him with the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit, Amen. that you would give him the grace necessary to go through the, the, the tiredness of preparation, of journeying from where he lives up here and back, of being able, of, of, of preaching every night and going to work the next day. All of that, Lord, takes a toll and we are asking you to give him the grace, Amen. the strength to do it. Yes. Father, I pray, Lord, that in his preparation, the Holy Spirit will take into account, of course, every person that will be present so that he will have a word for them. Father, we ask, Lord, that through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that he would be able to speak in a way that appeals to the hearts of those who are going to be saved. Yes. Give him the grace, Lord, that he would be able to deal with the church members because sometimes people have differences of opinion and Satan likes to make use of those things. Yes. So give him that grace, Lord, that he would be able to get along with those that he has to labor with. And Father in heaven, we pray that your will be done. Amen. Help us not as a church to look at numbers. Yes, we would hope that as many as possible would be saved. 
But Father in heaven, help us to realize that whether 10 comes in, 5, or 25, or 100, it's all what you see is necessary. Amen. Because Father, we know from experience that sometimes a whole set comes in. And then before you wink, many of them are out back again. And that creates a problem. So this morning, we are sensible enough, Lord, to ask that let your will be done. Whatever you decide, we agree with it. And help that the preacher will not ever be discouraged. But Father, I pray in a very special way that those of us who are present here today will understand that he needs to be encouraged. We need to hold up his hand, even as the prophets held up the hand of Moses. Father, give him grace and give him strength. Anoint him. Fill him with your Holy Spirit. And let him loose, Lord, to do your work. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, elders. Thank you very much, Elder Jardine. Elder Jardine said something very significant. But I want to add to what he said. A crusade is not just to get the word out. A crusade is also designed to make sure that the faith of our members are strengthened. But you can't, your faith cannot be strengthened if you're not here. I want to encourage every single one of us, every individual here today. Make every effort you can. I'm repeating that. Make every effort you can to get here because we all need this. I need this. You need this. We look at the times in which we live and we are conscious of the fact that soon and very soon, much closer than we realize, Jesus is going to burst the clouds of heaven. Let's make sure that this events, this crusade, this campaign becomes a revival of true godliness in our lives and I'm looking forward to see every one of us in heaven. God bless us all.
Wine Church. Good morning. We have a few letters that I have to read to you this morning. The first is, actually there's no title, but it's addressed to the pastors, elders, and members of the SDA Church in St. Vincent and the Grandines. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. I write to express my deep appreciation to members and friends of the SDA community for the overwhelming support given to me and my family as I served as district pastor, coordinator of the region, and executive secretary of the mission. Most of you, if, all, if not all of you, would have heard that I have been given the solemn responsibility to serve as the leader of the SVG mission of Southern Day Adventists. I thank you in advance for your continued support and much needed prayers. As we make the transition at this time, we express our profound gratitude to Pastor Dermot Batiste and family for his dedication, sacrifice, and invaluable contribution as the leader of the SDA Church in St. Vincent and the Grandines since 2007. May the Spirit of God and the blessing of God be upon him and his family as he continues to serve his Lord. Brothers and sisters, we appreciate that life is dynamic and that we will continue to experience change in many areas of life. However, let us never allow the change in circumstances to frustrate the fulfillment of our God-given mission, which is to prepare our nation, our world, for the coming of Jesus, the King of glory. May we continue to experience the favors and blessings of our Lord as we endeavor to be faithful in service. Yours in service, Henry R. Snag, President. The next letter is coming to us from the Education Department. Earlier in this year, we were able to have Education Day due we were unable, sorry, to have Education Day due to the Days of Elijah virtual evangelistic campaign. I am happy to remind you that our calendar of special events and activities makes provision for another Education Day scheduled for August 20th, 2022. Please find attached the prepared sermon for the day. Maybe this one wasn't supposed to read. I encourage you to plan well for the event. Basically, it's informing us that there's Education Day coming up on the 20th of August, 2022. Okay, this one is from the Sabbath School Ministries Director, and he's informing us of some exciting events. Greetings to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. The SVG mission of SDA would be celebrating its 10th year anniversary in November of this year, 2022. While the new administration is getting settled and is putting grand plans together, the Sabbath School Department is excited and hoping to make its contribution to the celebrations. We have planned two initiatives that we must share with you. First, we are hoping to have our first local Sabbath School program guide produced and developed by Vincentians. We invite program contributions from past and present Sabbath School officers. If you'd like to be part of this historic initiative, Send your programs to SVG Sabbath School at gmail.com. That's SVG Sabbath School at gmail.com. Do not miss this chance to claim a spot in history. Second, we are seeking to the special memory text runoff. We are encouraging all members of all classes of Sabbath School to commit the memory verses of for the year to memory for the year, okay? We will begin at the local church level with the hope to expand nationally, having champions on every level. Please do not procrastinate or hesitate. There is a blessing in store. Meet immediately or stay back after our services today. We also would like to extend condolences and announce the funerals for Brother Wynn, uh, Ainsley Williams, that will be at Yambu tomorrow. Um, but Delpesh, I can't, don't know where he, um, is that Mespo? Ivisham, tomorrow as well. And then next week, 
at Monk Cope, that will be Brother, sorry, Sister Hazland's uh, brother. So please bear in mind these families and let us support them wherever possible. Thank you very much. Hello, Mr. Pleasant. Good morning to each and every one. You are looking very beautiful from up here. And if you don't believe me, Jesus himself said, Come, let us make man and make them in his own image. And he said, It is good. And if Jesus said that it is good, who am I to go less than that? You are looking wonderful, and you are very beautiful from this advantage point. Okay, um, so welcome one, welcome all. Is there any visitors who came in a bit late? If you came in a bit late, we'd like you to stand. Any visitors? If you came in a bit late, can you please stand? Stand, sister. Whether you are from another Adventist church or any other denomination, please stand. If you came in a bit late, the ushers, could you please come forward? Nevertheless. <laughs> Okay, let us all uh, stand for the opening song. We ask our song leaders to come, please come forward as we join and sing very lustily. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it rain. Jesus is coming again. Number 213. And if you really believe it, blend your voices as we sing. Two hundred and thirteen, two, one, three. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it rain. the trumpet and low let it ring Jesus is coming again cheer up be pilgrim be joyful and sing Jesus is coming
Our scripture reading is taken from Isaiah. Scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. And I'll read in your hearing. It says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. May God add his understanding to the reading and application of his holy word. This morning prayer, we're going to do something a little bit different. When the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray, he gave them an example of a model prayer. I suppose we can't really do so much better than that. Isn't that so? So this morning, all of us, loud and clear, in fact, I'm deliberately going to lower my voice because I want to hear you. You're going to be a part of that prayer this morning. We're going to repeat that Our Father prayer. Every one of us know it. So, yeah. Are we ready? Together, Our Father. Who is taught in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not make it. Restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall. Father, we, your people, come to worship you. We are so glad that you have given us this opportunity to be present here today. We know that things are not going to be always like this. There will come a time when God's people will not be able to worship according to their conscience with the freedom that we have now. So, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. Help us to use this time 
Help us to use something that the preacher would say today, Lord, and please inspire him so that he could inspire us. Help us that we may use this opportunity to just get a little closer to you, to reconnect with you, so that you would be able to help us to see where we are. Because sometimes, Father, as we drift away from you, our vision becomes dim, and we think that we are okay, but we are not. So help us to get a good glimpse, Lord, of where we are, and grant that today will be a day when we start returning back to you. Many times, Lord, we have crusades and we think that the crusade is for others, those who are not yet baptized. And we feel that because we are baptized, everything, it's not even for us. So, Father in heaven, please help us not to realize, to think like that. Instead, grant that we would be able to use this opportunity to really become closer to you. Last night we studied about the sealing that is taking a place in the world, and we know that after the sealing, probation closes. Things will close up. At a time, there might be people who might want to repent, might wish they can turn things around and come back to you, but the game will be over. The opportunity will be lost. So, Father in heaven, help us to use this time wisely. Grant, O oh God, that all of us will benefit from being here today. And we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins. Grant, Lord, that we will be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Once again, we lift up the preacher. Be with him even as he speaks today. Grant, Lord, that he would have something to say that comes from the throne of glory. Be with his family. Protect them. Wednesday night we said that sometimes when Satan cannot get at the preacher himself, he tries to get at the family. So, Father, we lift them up and we ask that you would provide them with protection and that you would save all of us. Continue to save us now. Save us during the time when things will get rougher and save us into all eternity. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Once more, everybody, we shall now worship the Lord with our tithes, offerings, and gifts. However large, however small the possessions of any individual, let him remember that it is his only in trust for his strength, skill, time, talents, opportunities, and means he must render an account to God. This is an individual work. God gives to us that we may become like him, generous, noble, beneficent by giving to others. As we prepare, as the deacons prepare to wait on us, let us bow our heads as we pray on the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this, your holy Sabbath day. We thank you for providing for us, dear Father. We thank you for keeping us from day to day, from strength to strength, for allowing us to wake up each morning and do what we need to do, dear Father, to provide for ourselves and our families. And even today, dear Father, as we give back to you the portion that is yours, I pray that you will impress on the hearts of each person here. If they, as they have to give, dear Father, as they have received, let them give back to you. And even, dear Father, those who do not have to give, I pray that you will continue raining blessings on them so that they can continue, so that they can give. 
I pray that you'll be with us, dear Father, as we go through the remainder of today's service. May the offering that is collected here today be used to further your work here in Calder and the wider St. Vincent on a whole. In Jesus' name, amen. It was announced some time ago that uh, today we should be taking up a special offering for Mountain View Academy to help in the fencing. I don't know if anyone has brought their offering today. If so, then drop it in the basket so that we can see the offering that is taken up today will be channeled to Mountain View Academy to help with the fencing because Right now, they're going through problems. People breaking in and threatening some of the staff, some of the workers there. So they want to enclose the whole surrounding of Mount Mountain View Academy. Those of you who have brought the offering, put it in the basket as it passes around. Thank you. Yes, the, yeah. I, ju I just just remember that uh, it, it if not we'll if not you if not then we'll take it up next week Sabbath and uh, pass it on to Mountain View Academy. Thank you. This morning, it gives me great pleasure in introducing to us the one who's going to be presenting the Word of God. He grew up, he grew up in Canaan, accepted Jesus, a crusade by Pastor Claudius Morgan, 
in 1990. He's married to the wonderful Charlene, and the union has produced two beautiful daughters. They've been married for many years. Currently, he's the first elder of the Peniston SDA Church. A man who loves God, who loves proclaiming the word of God, love, have a passion for soul winning. I speak of no other than Ella Colin Olive. Ella Olive will be presenting God's word to us this morning, and he's the one who will be preaching night after night at our crusade. I invite Ella Olivier to speak to us this morning. But before he does so, let us lift our hearts heavenward and join in the praise team in bringing praise and thanks unto God. Good morning, everyone. We'll start with Brighten the Corner Where You Are. This is a song from our youth sing. We, unfortunately, we don't have the screen this morning, but we'll do our best uh, to raise the song. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties ever near you now be true. Right in the corner right where you are. Right in the corner where you are. Right in the corner where right you are. Right Across the bar, you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you just above are clouded skies that you may have to cleanse. Let not now yourself depart. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is 
is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, one day every time we're confused.
Amen. Happy Sabbath. Now, that doesn't sound as if you're happy, right? So let's try that one more time. Happy Sabbath. Do you know what is going on in heaven right now? They're having church. Don't forget the scripture says that the church and earth is one with the church uh, above. So we are having church while they are also having because it's the Sabbath day. It is a very wonderful and joyous day. I'm so glad to be here today. We are having a good thing, and it's the right time to have such a good thing. Because we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior is coming again very, very soon. Friends, tomorrow we are off. We are what? Off. They said that two things that don't return. I add three. The arrow that's gone, the words that are spoken, and the acceptable time crusade that kicks off. <laughs> yes, sir, indeed. I'm pretty, pretty excited about, um, about preaching the last message, preaching so that this word can be a witness to those who can hear it, to those whom the Lord allowed to hear it, for, for, for those also who are sharing it, it is indeed a witness. And I hope that we are passionate about it because there is no other way to describe it. You know, while I, I sat there a while ago, my mind went back that, 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 that angels will put the six hands if they have that amount, if they have that amount, and grabbed the opportunity to do what we are doing for the salvation of men. I don't think we understand the privilege that God would have given us. I mean, he didn't have to do it. It's, 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 it's really a privilege that we have. And it's, 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 it's a huge privilege because it comes with, 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 with a certain amount of responsibility. And God is expecting us to do just that. Amen? I pray that we will, at the end, as the song say, Lord, help me to, 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 to leave no, no, no unfinished tasks. You know that song? Yes, no unfinished tasks. Brethren, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward for it. And I trust that you too are looking forward for it. I wanted to invite your friends. 
Invite your neighbors. Invite your enemies. Invite your frenemies. Invite whoever you can invite. It is said one time that Adventists don't have enemies. It's crusade time. Amen? How are you saying that so soft? Because we want everybody to be a part of this experience. Also, we want to welcome in a very special way those who are visiting with us. Amen? It's, it's, it's a privilege that we have you here this morning that you would have taken the time out to be here today and to spend it with Jesus. What other way to spend your day? What other way to spend the Sabbath? Amen? But to spend it with Jesus Christ, your Savior and your Lord. This morning, we are going to speak about the acceptable time. The what? The acceptable time. You know, every time I'm preparing to have a crusade, something happens. Yeah, it's the norm now, and I'm expecting it. Every year, one year I was climbing a mango tree to get some mango. The sun, the, 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 during the week before the sun, the brother Jardy and I fell. The limb broke. That's not, that's not the hard part. The hard part is the limb broke with a straight piece of iron right under me. Mercy? <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't even remember if I tell my wife anything. Did I? No. Certain things you rather keep to yourself. Amen? Because she might say, you know, you know, mango tree fell. Good. So, 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 but as I came down and I fell right next to the eye, and when I looked over and I saw it, I said, my God. I haven't had migraine for a year. And this morning I woke up with a migraine. I was like, what is going on with this guy? Which means we are on the right track. We are on the right track. Let me say here this morning, one thing I like to say before I have crusade is that I make no apologies for the word of God. No, let me say that again because you're probably not hearing me. So let me say that again. I make no apologies for the word of God. Because Jesus didn't make any. And I ain't intend to make none. Amen? Are we still together? Some things might be said that you would agree with. Some things might be said that you might uh, 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 wait. Some things might be said that you might completely disregard. But that's okay with me. If it's in the Bible, you sure? What about if it's not in there? Then I'm in then I'm at the right place. I invite you to please bow your heads with me as we pray. Father and God, the great I am, the one who stooped low after descending from such high, so that we can be ascended to the height from which you came from. This morning, as we begin this acceptable time series, evangelistic series, I want to submit this period of time into your hands. And I ask that you will remove every obstacle, be it as high as a mountain or be it as small as an ant nest. O oh God, I pray today as we commence this program that you will beat back the powers of darkness that are planning to disrupt, to distract, and to drive persons from hearing the dust, said the Lord. I pray, dear Father, today, those who are visiting with us in a very special way, oh God, I pray that a word will be spoken today that they will draw from and help them to make a decision for you. I pray, O oh God, that you will touch every member of this congregation in a special way, every member of the crusade team. 
I pray, O oh God, that you will help us to keep our hands from evil, to keep our hearts from evil, to keep our ears, our eyes, to keep our feet from evil, so that you, through the power of your Holy Ghost, can work miraculously through us. I pray there, God, that as such as should be saved, I pray that you will do it for your own name's sake. And if by chance you desire not so, may the word of God go forth as far as it can go as a witness so that when you come back, men and women will have no excuse. Thank you again and be with me today as I proclaim this word, your word, the word, the only word. Hide me again behind the cross and let Jesus be high and lifted up, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Let me thank my family for being here this morning with me. Um, my wife is here, Sister Olivier, and daughter, one of them. The other one is at home. She's not doing quite too well, so Crescent is at home. Charisma and my wife is here. Please stand so that those who don't know you will just, whenever they see you, they will know um, this is the preacher's family. All right? So just please stand so that they can see who you are. All right? A Amen. They have been a strength, tower of strength to me over the years, and I'm really grateful. I told somebody one time again and again, if I were to born a hundred times and come, I'll still marry to the same woman. You, you are with me, right? All the time. Yes, I still marry to the same woman, and I will still desire to have the same two girls, even though I get fed up of them sometime, but that is understandable. That is understandable. Okay, to the word. The acceptable time. Friends, one of the hardest things for us humans to do is to accept when it is time. <laughs> one of the hardest things for us as human beings to do it is to accept that it is time. I'm see. I, I have seen some old men who still playing young. You know where I'm going. I have seen some old women with some old knee, God forbid, who still want to be young. Let me tell you something, brethren. This ship only comes around, but we must accept when it is when it is time. We also must accept as God's people and we must recognize as God's people when it is also time. You're not hearing me yet. I know you're not hearing me yet, but I'm going. We as God's people also must accept when it is time. Time for what? Aye, aye, aye. Now you will agree with me, brethren, that we have come to such a time as this. A time in which men and women, boys and girls, cannot explain what is happening in our world. It is baffling to the most developed and creative and lone mind. But yet it is understood by the simplest of mind. We have come to a time, Brother Jardine, 
that we have never traveled before. It's a time that we have never seen. A time maybe that we have only heard of. But I'm happy to let you know that the God we serve knows about the times. Ay, ay, ay. God in heaven knows what? About the, about the times. And so he says in Isaiah 46, our scripture reading, verses 9 and 10, you can just make a note of it because I'm going to read it through. The Bible says, remember the former things of old. Remember the what? The former things of, of old, for I am God. What is it that God wants you to remember? God wants you to remember what he had done. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He wants you to remember what? What he has done and he declared that I am God and there is no one else. I am God and there is none like me. Oh, let's go on. Verse 10 says what? Declaring the what? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all of my pleasures. Now, now, to be fair enough, if you're starting a project, you don't start it from the end. Talk to me, somebody. When you're starting a project, you start from the beginning. But God is saying that I am declaring the, the end, which means God went to the end, come back to the beginning, and tell you what is in there. Now try to explain that for me. And so the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, and I love this, to everything there is a season. We need to get that. For everything there is a season. Uh-huh. And a what? And a time to every purpose under the what? Under the heaven. We have been given a time to do all that is needed to be done. Let me tell you something. Season don't last forever. A season is a short period of time that you have to do it. And then the Bible says, all of us has been given a what? A season. So we must be careful. We must be what? Careful that we don't waste the season. We must be careful that we make good use of the season. And it is time. It is what? Time for God's people to accept the times in which we have come to and to make adequate preparation to enter heaven. Hmm. Not only that, but it is time as well for non seven day Adventists to realize that it is also time. It is time for us as faith believing people to take the word of God as the absolute rule of faith. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Let me say it slowly this time. It is time. It is what? Time. 
that we as God's people should take the word of God as the absolute rule of faith and practice. Make no mistake about it, my friends. We are living in the last times. We are living in the what? We are living in the last time. And God has a purpose for those of us who are living in the last times. And so 2 Timothy says, verse 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture therefore is what? It given, it is given by what? By inspiration of God and is profitable for what? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction is re- in right living. No, you see, when it's, a, when it's a righteousness, some people don't get it. So it is profitable for instruction in right living. That will come home a little closer. It is profitable for instruction in what? Right living. That the man of God, that the what? That the man of God may be perfect. Hold on, hold on. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So watch me, friends. So if we heed the doctrines of the word, there will not be any need for reproof. (laughs) Uh, let me run that if you heed the doctrine as it said in the word there will be no need for reproof there will be no need for correction there will be no need for instruction in right living because we have heed that doctrine of the word of God. The reason why we need to be reproved and corrected and need instruction is simply because we are stray in a way. So perfect, the Bible speaks about, it is without blemish. Without what? blemish in the Old Testament when the, when the Israelite presents a lamb before God it has to be perfect. It has to be without what? Without blemish. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me, stay with me. Thoroughly furnished. If I, if I rent you a thoroughly furnished house, would you still have to go by your neighbor in order to catch water? Will I have to run a call from neighbor to get light? If so, then the house is not thoroughly furnished. You see where I'm going? So the word of God, the word of God not just makes us perfect, but give us all we need so that we can perform the work that needs to be done. Are you seeing it with me? So God gives us a complete package. Let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. Let me hasten on. Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans 15 and verse what? And verse 4. Please don't be upset with me. Romans 15 and verse 4. Brother Marlon. The Bible says, For whatsoever things were written are four times... Whatsoever things were written in ancient yesterday times, yesterday times were written for what? Are written for our learning. What's your name, man? Hey, hey, you with the red hat. What's your name, mom? Rochelle. Thank you. So, Rochelle. 
Sorry, don't mind, mind, don't mind me if I call your name, right? Right, great. So, Rochelle. So, the Bible says that whatever was written yesterday, it was written for our learning. Now, as I go through the dictionary and, and I look up this, this, this thing, learning, it just says it is a process that leads to change. It is a process that leads to, to change. So learning by right should bring about change. I said, don't vex with me. Don't vex with me. When a baby learns to walk, does he go back to creeping? <laughs> When a baby learns to walk, they don't go back to creep. Why? Because they have learned. As a result of that learning, there is a change. Oh boy. Ay, ay, ay. Lord, help me today. Lord, help me today. The dictionary went on to say, which caused. As a result of experience. You there with me? Rochelle, which result as, an, as what? As, as, a, as a result of experience and increase the potential for further learning. So if what was written it was written to cause a change in our lives. There's one man who said, I can't believe the word coming out, coming out of my mouth. The apostle says that whatsoever things were written, it was written for our learning. And learning will result in change. Amen? This learning out of the word of God should lead to change. Wow, you quiet boy. Whew. It should lead to what? To change. To change. A change in behavior should take place. Rochelle? A change in worship should take place. You still with me? Say amen if you're still with me. A change in church attendance should take place. You still with me? I ain't done yet. A change in dress should take place. A change in adorning should take place. A change in eating should take place. A change in, recre in recreation to, should also take place. A change in the taste of music should take place. A change in relationship should also take place. Then he tells me then, after so many years, some people haven't learned a thing. I said, I make no apologies, Father. Make no apology for it. If after so many years, you're still eating the same thing that you used to eat, you haven't learned a... If 
you dress the same way that you used to dress, you haven't learned it. Mind you, you probably have been educated, but you haven't learned it. We are still good, right? Nah, it ain't song so it ain't song so at all, boy. In a song so at all, we still good, right? I was told that this crusade is also a revival. Amen. It starts today. Because look, the way in which some of us behave, it means that we haven't learned a thing. Because our behavior is still the We might be educated, plenty, a lot, but boy, we haven't learned a thing. When learning takes place, then change will follow. Friends, we have to learn the times. So as to make the, necessar the, the changes necessary in our lives. Let me say that again. We have to do what? We have to learn the what? The times. So that we can make the necessary changes needed in our lives. So that we can prepare for the second and imminent return of Jesus Christ. Change is needed. Watch. Friends, there are 12 lines of, 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 of Bible prophecy in the world which, which, which indicates probably that we are living in the last days. Living in the what? We are living in the last times. And the coming of the Lord dryad, nine of these, we may just mention just a few. One of them, as I go on, is the second, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the eleventh chapter of Daniel. You read it. We go on. The seven churches. You still with me? You still with me? The seven seal, the seven trumpet, the two witness, says, the dragon of Revelation chapter 12, the beast of Revelation 13, 17, in the book of Revelation, as well as the three, four whole message of Revelation 14. And Jesus himself discoursed in Matthew chapter 24. That was just the introduction. So let's go to the message now. Michelle? So much special signs and tells us that we are living in the last times. That was just... So what special signs just tells us that we are living that, that we are living in the what? In the last times. Now, as, as I go to Daniel chapter 12, from verse 4, it says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the book. Seal the book, even to the time of the, the end. So the book of Daniel was supposed to anciently was supposed to be shut and then reveal only in the time of the end. Is Daniel's book now understood? Yes. Then if so, then we are living in the time of the end. Amen. Daniel goes on to say, many shall run through, many shall run through and fall. And what? And knowledge shall be what? Knowledge shall be increased. Not just worldly knowledge, but also spiritual knowledge. Our world, friends, is so advanced and increasing in knowledge that not even the inventors can keep up with the things that they invented. <laughs> wow. And watch me. If God don't put a stop to it, mankind will destroy themselves. Do you know that? From cell phones, those big things we used to have in our hands, balang, 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 to tablets, to laptop, 
to computers, to transportation by air, by sea, and by land, to architectural design, you name it, advancement. How about weapons of mass destruction? Advancement. It is the time of the If you follow your news closely, brethren, you will discover that there is something brewing on the outside. Something what? Brewing on the outside. What am I speaking of? Listen to your news and you will discover that Nancy Pelosi wants to go to Taiwan. Remember there's a one China policy. China and Taiwan, Taiwan and China, they're the same. You know what? Mr. Xi Jinping has a problem with it. And he challenged America. If that happens, we will deal with each other. But you see, Rochelle, America find themselves in a pickle. Listen to pickle. You know when you don't pump up yourself to be a bajan. When a man challenge you, you can't back down. Otherwise, you're going to look as if you are what? So Xi Jinping says to Biden, if Nancy Pelosi touch her, we will have to take matters into our own hands. Because there's a one China policy. But again, the bad man opened me mouth and says that we believe in the in the in in the in the arm um, in the in the in the sovereignty that's the word we believe that taiwan is a sovereign nation and therefore could invite whoever they want to i will tell you what i don't know who is bluffing but brother jardin for the gospel's sake to reach the most sinners, I hope that somebody is bluffing. And I hope America will put the tail between there and zip it up. Or I hope China only talking. Because if not, if not, We are living in the time of the end. Russia. Turn off. Or turning off. The tap where the oil flows that goes to Europe. I'm just telling you this. By way of passing. The oil that Russia pumps to Europe. Before the war, it was 100%. During the war, it was 40%. Now in this, it is 18%. Hmm. Do you think it's per chance that, that that gas now jumped to $18.61? I have news for you. Russia, them not done yet. You see, I work at the Department of Consumer Affairs. And I could tell you, they ain't done yet. You think you see hard times? Let me tell you something. Live a little longer. For you young people who don't know what it means to get red eye blowing fire under a pot. <laughs> Colin, please go on. Let's go on, let's go on. Another sign that we are living in the last time, friends, is spiritual declension. Spiritual what? 
spiritual deed. Matthew chapter 24. Now, the word of God is given so that we can navigate through these uncertain tough times. So when the world is running to and fro, searching for answers, God's people know the answer. The time in which we are living in, my friend, call for us to take God's word as our absolute rule of faith and life. I say that and I will say it again. Crucial times. Do you see, much people these days want to make God the ruler of their lives? Do you see it? Do you see much people these days want to make God as the supreme ruler of their lives? And you know what is even frightening? Some of these people can be found right here in the church. God is not the That is the sad part. That is the painful part. That, my friends, is the dangerous part. On that great getting up morning, I pray God that some of us will not get up in the second resurrection. And then I ask ourselves a question, what am I doing? Spirituality? Matthew 24, 12 and 13. And because what? And because iniquity, oh God have mercy now. And because iniquity shall abound, this abound is become plenty. And because iniquity shall abound, what will happen? The love of what? Of many shall wax what? Shall wax coal. But he that endures, in other words, he that continues to love. Shall you see it? Because iniquity shall abound. What will happen? The love of many shall wax cold. But he that endures, he that continues to love. But that, that is what the text says. Me just put it, me just put the word plain again. He that continues to love. Shall be what? Shall be saved, Rachel. Shall be saved. But watch this. Watch this. The Bible says in John that God is what? That God is love. The Ten Commandments hangs itself on two great principles. Love for God and love for your fellow men. He that continues to love God and continues to love his. In the end, that person shall be. Do you want to be saved? Love God. Love God. Do you know what it means to love God? Let me tell you what it means to love God in a nutshell. Hate everything else. Well, I don't know how plain to put it. Hate everything else. I'm hasting on, I'm hasting on, I'm going, I'm going. So if we love God and love the brethren the way in which we, we, we are to, the Bible says that we shall be 
See? And what I love about this thing, Brother Jardine, is that God has put in every single one of us hearts love. Oh my God. God has placed. Don't care how wicked a man be, he still has love in his. You just need to tap into it. And the devil has twisted love, eh? So we have things like, well, if he not hit me, he not love me. He's going to strip in this attack. What? What? If he not hit you, he not, he not love you. Well, let go and hit you. And we will see what happens. Spiritual declension, a sign of the last days. Let me ask you a question. Do you see spiritual declension happen in our homes? Do you see it? I know I've seen it. Right in my home. Me had two teenage daughters and them are easy to go with sometimes. Hello, you know young people. Hello, you know them. You think they're easy? I won't let out the secret. Otherwise, she go vex me when I go home. Hello, but they're not easy for going with my Sometimes I care how you pray. We've seen it. The spiritual declension in our schools. We have seen it in our societies. We have seen it even in our church. These are the days you have to wring people's hand to get them to come to service. You know what I'm talking about? You sure you know? Gone the days as soon as, well, 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 well. Growing up, me been live at church. Tell me, mother gets so mad and vexed with me. So what happened? At church, at church you live. Sabbath is so, Sabbath is it is church. Sunday night is church. Monday is meeting. Tuesday is meeting. Wednesday is church. Thursday is meeting. You literally live at church. These days, well, even if you send bus at them doorstep, Rochelle, you even though you're driving in front of them doorstep, uh, Lengo asks you, um, um, is it streaming? <laughs> As if they live next to a river. When you go to heaven, there's no streaming, you know? Hello! When you go to heaven, Brother McDonald, there is no streaming. The only stream there is, is the one that runs from the throne of God. Is it streaming? One of these days, the internet go go down. And let me see where you can go get your source of streaming from. Some people even have the audacity to say, oh, I just enjoy serving at home better. I can stay home and listen to a nice sermon. Is that the one that the Lord wants you to have? Do you see how much blessings we miss out on sometimes? By being at the wrong place, at the wrong... That was the problem with David. 
David has no right being on his balcony, Rachel, when his men are at war. What is he doing home? Oh, streaming. Yes, he was streaming. As a matter of fact, he streamed too much. That is why he ended up where he did. Sorry, go on, Colin. Go on, go on, go on. So we have seen it in our church. We have seen it in our schools. This is the state, my friends, in which the world have come to. And we as God's people must guard ourselves against it. God's word must be the absolute rule of faith and life to his people. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, this know that, 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 that also in the last days, what sort of time shall come? Perilous time, dangerous time, risky times, hard times. But if you read this passage, it's not only talking about hard times in the world. It also talks about difficult times in the world. Church. Read it carefully. For men shall become lovers of them. Today, human beings are, are, are saturated with self exaltation and glorification. You want to know how I know? If some people don't get a like, they don't feel good. I know because me ha, me, me ha daughter, I can't say daughters, I have a, a daughter. I pray one of these days she ain't stop so. Because forever she'll be asking, Daddy, how I look? You look bad. We saturate ourselves with likes and glorifying ourselves. This is how I look. Look at me. Who are you? Let me tell you who you be. You're a lump of clay. You're a lump of what? Dot. You know who you are? You are what other people work on. You walk on yourself. Dogs walk on you. Cat poo on you. Donkey roll on you. And you still think that you are? Michelle, I don't know nothing. Miguel, I will not know. Not know. My sister, are we and not know? And it's time that we accept that. Do you know what makes us something? The grace of God that is living in this mortal clay. That's what makes us something. Talks about lovers of their own selves. We have become covetous. Always wanting what somebody else. And we boast over nothing. We boast over what? Nothing. And by doing so, friends, we can simply blaspheme God. What? And we become unthankful. And we become unholy. Oh, God, have mercy upon us. Have mercy. I 
upon us. And we still think that we are something. Let's go on. Let's go on. Man has debased himself to the place where they are unrecognizable. I've seen some people, they have tattoo from the head to the, you could hardly recognize who they are. Men who was created in the image of God, I've seen women put themselves with dogs. We have become unholy. The Bible says in verse 5, we have a form of what? Of godliness. But the power to live godly, we deny it. Perilous times, my friend. Today feels like a, a period in our lives that we wouldn't want our children to grow up into. But we still have them anyway. We still have them anyway. Let me go on quickly and see if I could see if I could run up now. We have something that we call increasing riches. We are live. One of the sure signs of the end is what? Increase of what? Riches. Oh, you didn't know that. Men are consumed by becoming rich. And sad to say. All is for the wrong reason. See, there's nothing wrong with riches, you know. And I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you here from the scripture. James says, go to now. James 5, 1 to 3. Go to now, we rich men. Do what? Weep and howl for your misery that shall come upon you. Riches seems by the Bible... Is associated with miseries. I didn't say so. Don't say the preacher says so. The Bible says so. But listen, 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 listen. Go on. E rich. Your riches, sorry, are corrupt. And your garment is mold eaten. <laughs> your gold and your silver is conquered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Let me tell you something, brethren. Are you aware that we are living in a rich-driven age? Where people are obsessed. Why do you think people play lotto? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because they don't like to work. But one of the things that people play lot is because they want to get rich. It will be amazing to you what some people will do to get riches. Do you know that there are people who will sell their daughters and their sons in order to get riches? You know what I realized, Brother Jardine? The more we increase in this world's riches, the more we become spiritual poverty. The more we grow in riches, is the more we become spiritually destitute. Because what riches can observe you, it can... It, it, it can suck you in. Go on quickly. Go on quickly. Matthew chapter 19 speaks about then Jesus said unto his disciples. Jesus said unto the church. Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly. So a rich man shall what? Hardly. So they are rich men who would be in heaven. You, you could never say amen. That are your business. 
You could never say amen. That are your business. But the Bible says that a rich man will hardly, which means there is still a. But Jesus warned very, very, the next word that Jesus speak was a warning against it. Uh, was a warning against becoming rich for the wrong. Watch this. Verse 24 says, and again I say unto you, speaking to the church, his disciples, speaking to the church, his the disciples, Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says quickly, um, it is easier for a come, and this is not figurative, eh? like some people like to say, oh, this is figurative. No, this ain't no figurative language. Listen to what he says. It is easier for a what? For a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus is saying, watch it. Jesus is saying, it is easier for the impossible to happen than for that we think is possible to happen. You see, the danger is when people become rich, they, they become self-dependent. And they don't need any external help. And that's what Jesus was warning against. When some people get rich, they forget God. You understand what I'm saying? They forget whom? Let's take, let's take the last one. Let's take the last one. Let's take the last one. Rejection of God's law. One of the last, this sign is what? Rejection of what? Rachel? Rejection of God's law. Let me tell you something. When you reject God's law, you reject God himself. Let me say that again because some people didn't get it yet. When you reject God's law, you reject God himself. Because the law, as we like to put it, is a transcript of the character of God. But let me break it down simpler so we could understand it. So when we talk about the law is a transcript of God, of God's character, we mean that the law is holy and God is the law is just and God is. The law is spiritual and God is. So it is who God is. So when you reject God's law, Rochelle, you're actually rejecting God. No, that is serious. Because there are some people who are going about say that the law is done away with. What actually you are saying is that God is done away with. And so Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8 and 9. Now go, write it before them in a book. And, not, and, and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, a lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Have we become that? Have we become so? Have we? Have we become a people who no longer desire the law of God? I pray not. I hope not. Let me go right down to the end. Right down to the end. I will end where I begin. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1. To everything, there is a, a season. Oh, I love it. But I'm Alan, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. I'm going to ask you a question. 
what time it is for you. Rochelle, what time is it for you? Ask yourself this question. What time is it for you? Is it a time to stop lying? Think within your own heart. What time is it for you? What season it is for you? Is it a time to stop stealing? Is it a time for... <coughs> Sorry. Is it a time for you to stop cheating? Are you there with me still? Is it a time to get serious with God? What time is it for you? Is it a time, friends, to reconcile your relationship with whoever it is? What time it is for you? It is a time, friends, to give Jesus Christ your heart. I don't know what time it is for you, but I know what time it is for me. I have a clock on my wall, and I know what time it is for me? When last have you looked at your clock and your wall? What time does it say? What time it says? 10 o'clock? It's far from 12. What time it says? 10.30, it's far from 12. What time it says? 11.55, then it is almost time. I understand some years ago they have set the doomsday clock. They have brought it forward. This wall is expecting something to happen. You know that? They are expecting something to happen. But no man reset God's clock. He sets his own clock. And he monitors it every moment of the day. What time is it for you? As I close, as I close, brethren. For many of us, it might be 10. For many, it might be 11.55. But I'll tell you something that I am fully persuaded and convinced about that the time is late. We don't have much time. The season for planting is almost gone. And the season for reaping is just around the corner. I want to be in God's time so that I won't be out of time. I want my clock to be synchronized with God's clock so I would know what time it is and what needs to be done so that I can make the necessary changes in my life so that when Jesus Christ comes he will say to me well done you have made good use of your time Is there anyone with me who wish to say those words? Who wish to hear, sorry, those words from the lips of Jesus? Well done. You have made good use of your time.
If you are not a member of the church and you wish to say that, please stand. Don't be ashamed. Just stand. And we're going to pray for you today. Don't be afraid at all because nobody is afraid of you. Do what you have to do. Let's go. Who will be the first to stand? Who will be the first to stand? Just stand. You want me to come and help you stand? I'll come. You want me to come and stand by you? I'll come. Just stand. You want to say, Lord, I want to be, I want to be synchronized with your clock. Come on, come on, just stand, just stand, just stand. Just stand wherever you are, just stand, just stand, just stand. You are here visiting today, just stand so that I can pray for you. Amen. God bless you. Is there somebody else who want to stand? Come, young lady, just stand. That, that, that's all you have to do. Just stand. Just stand. I'm waiting. Just stand. Jesus is waiting. Just stand. Just stand. Is there somebody else want to join the young man? Just stand. Please, just stand. Jesus is waiting. Just stand. Softly and softly and tenderly. Jesus is crusade starts to today. Is there somebody else who wants to stand? Let's sing quietly, very softly, softly and tenderly, my praise team. Come on, let's just sing that song softly as we, as we close. Brother Jardine, I want you to stand right next to that young lady, right there. My elder, I want you to stand right to that young man. I don't know if you're saying that Ventus, if he is better yet, just stand right next to him. And I need another elder. Brother Marlon, just stand by gentleman down there, I don't know if he's an adventist, but just stand to by the side of him. Let's sing. Sing, come home, friends. Sing, come home. Come home. Sing, come home. He Then we are going to pray. You see the person you are standing with? Bring them up to the altar for special prayer. Just, just bring them to the altar for, 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 for prayer. Just, just come. Just come. Just come. Amen. Just come. Just come. The rest of us will stand, we sing the second stanza, and then we close. Think of the... Yes, sir. The window is still open, you can still come. The window is still open, you can still come. Pardon for you. Pardon for you. Come on, sing the song, come home. Come on, sing the song, come home. Come home.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so glad that you have given us this opportunity. I pray, Lord, for these two young ladies that are standing right next to me. I pray that you would bless them in a very special way. Grant that your Holy Spirit will speak to them and draw them to you. Help them to realize that you'll never call them into something that is bad for them. Grant that you do the same for all those who have come up here this morning. Bless them in a very special way. It, it has been a tremendous thing for them to make this move. So reward them, bless them in your own way. And for those of us who are still down there, who have stood, we ask that you would help all of us to be drawn closer to you. Continue to be with the preacher. Grant him grace and strength and anointing. And may you save all of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can go back to your seat. 212, that's our closing hymn. 212, test almost time for the Lord to come. And it is indeed almost time for the Lord to come. Let's stand as we blend our voices as we sing our closing and parting hymn.
Amen. And I trust that we all have all been blessed. Now, when we leave here, we have lunch that is will be served downstairs. So make sure you go down, you collect your lunch. Remember this afternoon, we're coming back here for 4 o'clock. We'll be here for 4 o'clock. Let us bow our heads to prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings, your mercies. We pray, Lord, as we go through to the rest of the day that you will be with us. And even as we look to launch out to tell persons about you this afternoon, be with us. Bring us back here safely. I pray that you will be with us as we fellowship downstairs, as we eat. Thank you for those who have prepared and be with us as we eat. Take control and guide us safely home, we pray in Jesus' name. as you go and may God continue to be with you. Okay. All ushers for the crusade.